Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Researching ancient sites to try and make sense of a past civilization is no easy feat because there are so many theories, hypotheses and ideas already out there. I want to make sense of Gebekli Tepe, but when formulating my own ideas, it means having to review not just a handful, but all of the ideas that have been put forward. And recently, I looked into a claim that made the headlines in 2013. In August of that year, new scientists ran an article that was titled, World's Oldest Temple, Built to Worship the Dog Star. The headline alone in a credible scientific publication does sound very certain. It sounds like it's a mystery solved, but since I started the Ancient Architects channel, it seems that nobody is talking about it. But that's until the new Netflix series by Graham Hancock called Ancient Apocalypse, where in episode 5, Hancock notes the hypothesis from 2013 by Giulio Magli that the central pillars of the oval enclosures line up with the dog star Sirius. In this video we're going to take a closer look. Magli simulated what the sky would have looked like from Turkey at the time Gebekli Tepe was built and he made a curious observation and it concerns the bright star Sirius, also known as the dog star. Sirius is the brightest object in the sky, excluding the Sun, the Moon, Venus and Jupiter. Magli told new scientists how Sirius was so prominent to the ancient Egyptians that the rising and setting of the dog star was the basis for their calendar. Interestingly, at the latitude of Gebekli Tepe, Sirius would have been below the horizon until around 9300 BC and this was when it would have suddenly popped into view a bright star not seen in this part of the world for millennia. As you may or may not know, the wobble of the Earth's axis means the positions of the stars in the night sky do change over time. Stars rise and set at different points in different time periods, while some completely fall out of view and others appear. For the people of Gebekli Tepe in 9300 BC, According to Magli, they would have observed the birth of this star on the horizon, and it's a very bright star at that. With only a small amount of light pollution, from the top of a hill, this would have surely been a notable event, and according to Magli, it could have even spawned a new religion. On noting this observation, Magli modelled three of the circular enclosures at Gebekli Tepe and drew an imaginary line between and parallel to the two megaliths in the middle of each enclosure. He discovered that the central T-shaped pillars seemed to mark the points on the horizon where Sirius would have risen in 9100 BC, 8750 BC and 8300 BC respectively. So I downloaded Magli's 2013 paper for a closer look at the claims. The three structures with the alignments are enclosures B, C and D, with the central alignments being 159, 165 and 172 degrees respectively. The argument is that the structures of Gebekli Tepe were conceived to celebrate and then follow in the course of centuries the appearance of Sirius, a brilliant guest star as he calls it in the sky. He does say his claims do need to be taken with caution. To be correct, it means Enclosure D would have had to have been built in 9100 BC. Enclosure C in 8750 BC and Enclosure B in 8300 BC. That's 800 years covering the three different buildings and if that's correct, it means there was no major development of construction styles, art and iconography in this time. And so, this to me already seems very unrealistic. The idea would also be scuppered if evidence was to be found that the Gebekli Tepe enclosures had a roof. Now I lean towards the idea that they did have a roof. 11,500 years ago, the climate in this part of the world was warmer and wetter than today, 
and the intricately carved limestone pillars don't look like they've been attacked by hundreds of years of weathering and erosion. Just look at the quality of the reliefs. There looks to be very little weathering and erosion. Surely there was a roof. Of course, I don't know how a roof would have looked specifically, although some people have tried to model it based on the archaeology. It's also very likely that the oval enclosures were subterranean, being lower than the rectangular domestic structures that encircle them. If you are standing inside an oval enclosure, the chances of seeing anything close to the horizon would be significantly reduced. This is how the enclosures were shown in Ancient Apocalypse, but this is the most recent artist's impression, showing the circular enclosures as being subterranean or semi-subterranean, and also likely covered by roofs. And this all comes from the latest data. I've also noted another problem. There are more than three enclosures at Gobekli Tepe. We also have enclosures A, E, F and H. Magli does say that enclosure F points pretty close to the rising sun at the summer solstice, but there is no mention of enclosures A, E or H. It's also worth remembering, there could be up to 20 circular enclosures at Gobekli Tepe, so does that mean that every enclosure would have to have astronomical significance? Circular and rectangular enclosures are also found at dozens of pre-pottery Neolithic sites in Turkey. So for the hypothesis to be correct, do these also have to have astronomical alignments? Maybe they all do, but this work would need to be done because the circular enclosures of Gebekli Tepe are not architecturally unique in the landscape. Magli ends his paper with a famous vulture stone also known as Pillar 43 of Enclosure D, where we see a vulture with a sphere or disc on its wing, and he speculates it could be a representation of the newly born star rising up, which is a nice interpretation to support his hypothesis. Two years after this new story in New Scientist, and Magley released another paper. In it, he notes the radiocarbon dates associated with Enclosure D, which are 9664 and 9311 BC, which is close to his revised date of Enclosure D based on astronomy, 9227 BC. Radiocarbon dates for Enclosure C are 9261 to 9139 BC compared to Magli's date of 8850 BC. His date for Enclosure B, according to astronomy, was 8400 BC, whilst archaeologists got a variety of dates between 9500 and 8500 BC. He says the data supports his hypothesis, but in my opinion, it doesn't make it any more conclusive. In fact, it's quite the opposite. In truth, the archaeologists don't believe that Enclosure B was built in 8400 BC, more like 9000 BC, because the later radiocarbon dates are actually from intrusive burials, and so this does critically damage the hypothesis. Magley speculates that Enclosure A and F may have been oriented towards the Sun and Moon, but I'm yet to see any supporting evidence for a Moon association. At the time of writing, there wasn't enough information available for Enclosure H, and that, in a nutshell, concludes his work. Since his publications, Andrew Collins and Rodney Hale wrote a paper looking into Magley's claims, and concluded that, to the people of Gebekli Tepe, the appearance of Sirius on the horizon would have actually been somewhat feeble and unremarkable, and that's all due to atmospheric extinction it would have actually looked quite dim and barely visible with the naked eye. This therefore looks to be the final nail in the coffin of the Sirius hypothesis. Weighing up all the evidence, and for me personally, I am unconvinced there is a connection between Gebekli Tepe and Sirius. It is a nice hypothesis, but in reality there are just too many problems to overcome. 
saying that, and as I continue my research on the Tastapella sites of ancient Anatolia, I'll certainly bear it in mind as more and more new discoveries come to light, but I really don't think that Sirius is the key to solving the mystery of Gebekli Tepe. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.